Welcome to the Juilliard Dance Parent Workshop. I would really, really like to introduce our dance curriculum specialist, um, Josh Palmer here for you today, who's going to be running a um, dance workshop for you to kind of give you an insight into what sort of uh, lessons your children will be having delivered um, and the sorts of things that they may be learning. So thank you, Josh, for joining us today. And we give you a warm welcome here at NASTA Bye. Thank you, Megan. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And as mentioned, um, I am going to be leading uh, the parents through a an abbreviated version of one of our workshops. Um, it is an activity that is within our Sleeping Beauty core work. Um, each of our activities is connected to a core work or an actual professional work that's performed in the world. Um, this one is within the genre of ballet. Um, it's called Epaumont Exploration. Um, and so to start off, I just wanted to give a little bit of um, historical information about ballet and its origins. Um, it began in the French royal court in the 17th and 18th centuries. Um, and really um it was a very kind of ornate um dance form that was really only done by again the royal class and and the nobility um to start let's look at some photos of some examples of architecture um if you'll bear with me for a moment so I believe you should be seeing my screen right now. Um, so these are some images of the time of um, the architecture. Um, so as we look at these and um, we think about the time, we think about um, the aesthetics that are encapsulated in these photos. I just want everyone to take a moment and look at these and, and really see how you would describe them to someone that you were talking to about this era. Um, looking at the buildings, um, looking at the design, do you see a lot of straight lines? Do you see a lot of curves? Um, are things very plain and simple or more ornate and embellished? Um, because as we think about any dance form or any art form really within a certain period of time, I think it um, benefits us all to understand how it fits within the larger context. Okay. So with those images in mind, um, I'd like to take us through a brief um, movement improvisation um, and this will start really small and just thinking again with those um, those images in mind and thinking about the movements that you do and how they might connect to the feeling of those images and also how they might connect to the people who lived at that time among all of that architecture right um, I'm going to play some music and we will um move to this music i will speak you i will speak through um the improvisation and i'll also offer words to kind of influence uh your performance of your movement yeah okay so bear with me right now as i get the music running Great. 
So let's start off simply with the movements of the hands. So these can be movements however you would like to move. Just starting off very small with the hands at the moment. Good, and progressing to the shoulders. Lifting and circling, everything that I'm doing is simply a suggestion. Move however the music might move you. Thinking again about those images. Good, and here we are extending the movement into the arms as well. Think about the speed that you're moving. Does this music make you want to move fast or slow? Is it a luxurious feeling? Is it a, is it a heavy feeling? And I'm going to, as you continue your movement exploration um, throughout different parts of your body, um, simply say some words to keep in mind. So the first word is smooth. How can you make your movement smooth? And the second word is precise. Ornamental. Regal. And finally, stately. Good, I'm bringing your movements to a close. So just to give a little more context, um, I would like to share some images of dress at the time. So I believe my screen should be sharing these two images um, of what Baroque dancers would have worn at the time. So on the left, you have uh, the woman's uh, garb and on the right you have the men's. Um, what you can't see is that both are wearing um, high heels and both are wearing corsets as well. So this meant that they were obviously on a little um, bit of a precarious situation in terms of their feet and it also meant that they were very um, restricted in terms of their the movement of their of their rib cage of their torso. So as you think about that, um, we're gonna go back to that exploration, um, revisit it, and I would like you to imagine that you are wearing one of these outfits, yeah? And imagine if you're very restricted in your rib cage and your torso area, what are some of the other expressive um, ways that you can move and what what parts of your body are available to you to to give that expression so i'm going to play the music once again and again imagining you are in this costume imagining you're surrounded by all of that architecture and moving your arms, moving your head, your neck, your shoulders in a way that is smooth and precise. How can you make your movements ornamental? Regal and stately.
Good. And so the last um, bit of inspiration that we'll look at here is really um, some examples of APOM Moth. So and I think my screen is still sharing. Bear with me. Yes, it should, should still be sharing. So APOM Moth, roughly translated in French means shouldering, right? So as I mentioned before, with both the men and the women wearing uh, corsets and also being up on elevated shoes, um, they really wanted to make shapes that were um, beautiful, that didn't have any harsh lines or, or angles. Um, and so the way that they chose to do that was to add a lot of curved movements with the arms, with the shoulders, changing the angle subtly, lengthening the neck away. And that's where we get a lot of port de bras in um, ballet now, and today. This is kind of the beginnings of those. And you can see in the photos, the way that they move, they'll move their entire torso in one piece, um, as this gentleman is here. Um, they just turn, instead of facing directly, um, forward they might turn to the side just to create a more pleasing angle and show the slope of the shoulders um you see this gentleman over here with his one arm extended and the other one kind of softly curved and then here you see the pair as well both arms extended but again not in a very sharp manner and not um in a straight line but with sort of softening at the elbows Great. So with every lesson that we do with our students, um, every Juilliard activity is connected to an excerpt of the core work on which it is based. Um, so every activity, every lesson ends with a viewing of that excerpt. Um, so we will do that as well. And after that, we will uh, be discussing a few questions that were sent in advance to Megan. Um, so again, bear with me as I share the video with you.
Excellent. So as you saw, the dancer, um, which is a contemporary ballet dancer here, or a classical ballet dancer in contemporary times, I should say, um, she is dressed in costume that is not quite as restrictive as um, her Baroque counterparts, um, but she does seek to keep her, her torso again um, quite lifted and in one piece um, as her arms and um, legs uh, kind of supply the ornamentation. Great, so I believe that we can move on to the question and answer part of the session. Thank you so much, Josh. That was brilliant. Thank you. Um, so yes, I've received a few um, different questions from um, some of our parents here, um, and I just thought I'd go through some of them um, that may help answer a couple of the questions for others as well. Sure. So the first question is, um, what makes the Juilliard dance curriculum um, unique? So part of it is, is as I mentioned, um, that each activity, each lesson that we do, we create um, starting with a core work, a professional dance work that exists in the world. Um, we think this is really important because it not only gives the information to students about the form, but it also immediately connects what they are doing in the classroom to the highest level of the art form. Um, so that's one of the things and the and another thing that I think is really great is that everything is discovery and exploration based. So that means that um, while we are guiding students um, to discover and learn this information and we do some of the information, of course, is just shared. Um, the things that we really want them to connect to, to engage with, to remember um, are things that they discover through these activities um, kind of on their own. And that gives them a more increased ownership of that um, information, of that discovery. Great, thank you. Um, the next question we have is, um, how is the Juilliard curriculum taught? Um, I know that you kind of already expanded on that, but um, if you want to go any further. Yeah, so um, I guess what I would say to, to expand on that is, is within the exploration, um, when we're writing activities, we will, we will decide um, on an excerpt that's inspiring to us um, as educators and we'll ask ourselves questions like what are the key ideas in this excerpt what is the choreographer really trying to either get across um, and that doesn't always have to be a message or a narrative it can also just be um, certain thematic ideas that they're working with certain um, dance elements that they might be working with and that are we really feel are exemplified by these short maybe two minute excerpts um, and as we kind of create those lessons and then give them to the students, um, we make sure that they're scaffolded really well so that um, we're not just throwing a bunch of tasks at the students and saying like, here, do this thing that you might be really uh, overwhelmed by. We're kind of giving them piece by piece, like here's the first step, do this thing. And then after we've achieved that, we're moving on to the next thing. And what it does is it creates I think some safety to explore because for students exploring a new new terrain can be a little um you know scary sometimes and so it's our job as teachers as educators as you know um to help them feel safe and and um give them agency in their explorations thank you um the next question we have um what are the various uh, types of things that students will be learning within their dance lessons? So we have, it, it, again, uh, it's a curriculum resource that each um, dance specialist at the schools in conjunction with their um, forming arts heads um, kind of decide on the curriculum. Um, the online resource has uh, activities connected to core works ranging from uh, Bharatanatyam, ballet, uh, hip hop, tap dance, um, and then we have also contemporary choreographers of today um, 
in addition to some other genres as well that are there. So really it's it's a, a good sampling of the different types of world dance that are out there and we are, you know, adding to it all the time. Thank you. Um, I've just got one final question. Um, what further opportunities um, can we have with Juilliard for dance? What are more opportunities that are available with Juilliard? Obviously difficult, we know, um, with, with COVID and everything like that, but. Yes, so we, so we often will have um, different summer programs. Um, sometimes they involve um, dance, music, and drama, because we, again, deliver all three as part of um, this partnership. Um, it's it's difficult because many of them, like the ones for last summer, were canceled. Um, um, this summer, I believe it's just um, music that 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 is happening. Um, but, you know, we hope to 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 offer more opportunities for students um, in the future when we're a little bit back to normal. Yes, I know we've got a couple of students that are doing the virtual summer camp this year from from North Anglia Dubai. But oh, um, great. They, yeah, so they're um, they're excited to do that, but they're really excited that hopefully next year it will be back to the summer camp. That um, would be great. Um, thank you so, so much, Josh, for joining and for those uh, in the parent workshop today. I know that I'm extremely lucky as the dance specialist here at Nord Anglia Dubai to have Josh as my um, support through Juilliard and he's a fantastic support. Um, so I'd really like to say thank you so much for joining today and I hope um, those parents at home just have learned a little bit more about the um, Juilliard dance curriculum um, and have seen that and know who our Juilliard curriculum specialist for dance is, which is Josh. Thank you so much, Josh. Thank you, Megan. And thank you everyone at home.